Hello viewers, once again welcome to the Lung Leng Show and today I have Mr. Joel Naga. He's the president and the founding member of the Rising People's Party, which is a newly formed political party which was formed a few years ago in the state of Nagaland. So I'm um, glad that he's here with us again to have a conversation and he's nobody new to me. But I'm glad that he is here again to talk about the ongoing election campaigns and I mean the stance that he, he and his party have taken for this upcoming election, um, which is very, very crucial and you know, which will decide the upcoming five years again. So thank you so much for coming to our studio for this show again, and I'm glad that you are here to share your points of mm. view again. Thank you, Lung Len, once again. Mm. So you have been busy traveling again. Yes. But sadly, or fortunately or unfortunately, mm -hmm. it's not for RPP. What's going on? Uh. I won't say unfortunately. Okay. We have decided to support a Congress because uh, we stand on the same ideology, mm -hmm. which is uh, inclusivity and diversity. And we felt that uh, we should support a Congress by any means because we have to defeat the BGP in India. And uh, this is a golden opportunity for all of us. Mm -hmm. So when I say the RPP, Hopefully, I represent the sentiments of all the Naga people. Mm. Yeah. And as a political party, I mean, it's very important for you to um, open your own account as well. You mm -hmm. tried that in the Nagaland mm -hmm. Assembly election, uh, which did not work yet. And mm -hmm. this election is also very crucial. Yes. However, you are a political party, and why don't you feel your own candidate? I mean, like... See, uh, Lungland, the issue is very simple. Mm. If we set up a candidate, we'll be eating into Congress votes and vice versa. So basically, uh, we'll be splitting the Congress uh, vote share. Mm. And once that happens, even the Congress will not win, and even the RPP will not win, for sure. Mm. So instead of dividing ourselves uh, in the polls, we felt that we should support Congress, even though it was a good opportunity for the RPP this time. Mm. Because by only by contesting in elections, we can gauge the mood and the feelings of the people. But uh, as I said in various platforms, probably this is a blessing disguise for the RPP. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But were you to field any candidate, mm -hmm. suppose, let's say, you know, your party, you wanted to field, do you think at this, what is your status? Do you, do, do, do you think your party will have a viable candidate if you were to field? Just absolutely, absolutely. In that scenario. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, see, uh, the fight is not about, uh, the, I mean, what I'm trying to say is, when you feel a candidate, normally, mm -hmm. it's not so much about a person, but it's about the ideology and the party mm -hmm. he or she represents. So in that sense, we could have filled a candidate. There's no doubt about that. Okay, okay. Yeah. And you are stressing so much on the ideology, yeah. diversity, inclusivity, or let's say the rule of law. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, in a diverse country like India, ideology is fine. That's 100%. Mm -hmm. I would agree with you. Now, I mean, I also want to let you know that um, I have the freedom of having not to worry mm -hmm. when I question you because, I mean, you're free to answer. <laughs> but now my yeah. point is, even Congress was a scam-ridden party mm -hmm. in, in the last you know, mm. before, while they were in the party, mm. till 2014, it was one scam, scam after another scam. So that party was so corrupt mm. then. And now your party, RPP, as a party that is, you know, um, anchoring on mm. zero corruption mm. ideology. How are you trying to reconcile with these two characters? See, uh, you're talking about the Congress, yeah. but what about the BJP? Mm. In fact, uh, they committed the mother of all scams <laughs> through the electoral bonds. Electoral bond, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And so, yes, you can talk about Congress at the national level as such. They were not, you know, saints, I understand that. Mm. But uh, as far as the Nagaland context is concerned, mm. Congress has been out of power for 20 years, more than 20 years. And uh, you have to understand the context. And so, as far as Nagaland is concerned, we are on the same page, the Congress and the RPP. Mm. And obviously, they also stand against uh, corruption as such. Mm. But then here, as to the reason why we are supporting the Congress, mm -hmm. the picture is larger. Mm. 
Mm. The picture is larger, and therefore we felt that we should support the Congress. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Now, what is that picture you're looking at? See, the BJP is talking about uh, uh, Hindu Rashtra. Yep. Yeah. And it's blatantly anti Christian and anti minority. Mm. And, uh, but the fact of the matter is that our NDP led government, led by Jimmy Zunir Furio, he's always saying and he is always apologizing for the BJP. Mm. He's saying that the BJP is not anti Christian. Mm. Secondly, he's saying that uh, Rio's, uh, sorry, the PDA government stands for Naga Solution. Mm -hmm. They have no agenda, only these two agenda. Mm -hmm. So it's high time that we felt we should expose the PDA government mm -hmm. for all its falsehood. Mm -hmm. And the, we are supporting Congress based on two things. One is uh, this Congress or India Alliance should come to power. And most of the Naga people they are supporting the Congress. In fact, as of now, Congress is winning in Nagaland. Okay. That's for sure. Mm. So, the Naga people are very much aware of what's happening in India. And they feel that Modi government should be done away with. Mm. Because of his... Uh, because once Modi comes back to power in 2024, mm. after this election, there will be no more democracy in India. It will be a dictator dictatorship or electoral autocracy. So Naga people are very much aware of that. Mm. And secondly, the Naga people are fed up with 21 years of Rio's misrule. 21 years. And they feel that there should be a change, even in the state. Mm. In fact, this election is going to be a referendum against Rio's government. Mm. That's for sure. For the first time in Rio's political career, he is going to be defeated in the polls. Mm, mm, mm. In so this Lok Sabha election. Oh, are you? Okay. I mean, mm -hmm, so this is mm -hmm. a fight not just with the BJP, it's with exactly. the local political parties. I mean, exactly. the ruling parties. The Nagaland context is always there. Mm. Yeah. I mean, from where did you draw such level of confidence? Look at look at the rally which happened yesterday. Okay, you went to Semenu. Uh, I went to Semenu. Okay. And I'm talking about the rally in Agri Expo Dimapur. Oh, okay. JB Nada came. Mm. There were hardly any people, hardly mm -hmm. finery people. Mm -hmm. And there were no Nagas there, just some few non-locals non with flags. Mm -hmm. So what does it show you? Mm -hmm. In fact, J.B. Nada was humiliated. Cool. See, they are used to addressing thousands of thousands of people. Yeah, yeah, that's right? true. That's true. And in Nagaland, when he came, there were hardly 300 foreign people. Mm -hmm. So what does it show? Mm -hmm. It shows that the Naga sentiment is absolutely not with the and DPP nor with the BJP. Or giving the benefit of the doubt. Okay. Maybe they don't want to be seen as BJP supporters, but in the poll, on the day of the poll, they might end up voting for the PDA. Is if, there a possibility no, of such? If they do so, it's because of the money power. Okay. Yeah. See, you have to understand that NDPP has lots of uh, money power and, of course, the muscle power, whatever. Now, as of right now, the sentiments, as I've stated earlier, the sentiment of the people is totally against the uh, NDPP and BGP-led government. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the YouTube, if you look at social media, you know, almost everybody is voting for the Congress, 80 to 90%. Mm -hmm. So it reflects the reality. Now, knowing that, the danger is that the NDPP-led government they will infuse lots and lots and tons of money through the MLAs. And their MLAs are already campaigning in their respective constituencies. They are doing house-to-house -house and door-to-door -door campaigning, mm. which Supong cannot do, mind you, yeah. because he doesn't have any MLAs MLA. with him. Mm, true. So he is alone, and he cannot cover, he cannot cover all the districts. Mm. So these MLAs, they are playing with money. That's for sure. Mm. In fact, I won't be surprised if they spent to the tune of 100 CR during this time. Oh, really? Yes. But I mean, there would be no return of investment. You know, why invest such amount of money? Why, I mean, is there any rational? Why would they spend? Because the issue is very simple. <laughs> they have 60 MLAs. Yeah, yeah. 
and despite having 60 MLAs, if they, if they lose this election, be look at the loss of face, the loss of prestige. Mm -hmm. And Rio's government is depending on the central government for all the funding. Mm -hmm. And probably they've assured, you know, their central leaders that we will ensure that the BGP uh, alliance, alliance yeah. candidate wins the election. Mm -hmm. So it will be a huge loss of face. And therefore, they're willing to throw anything. Mm. Despite the fact that there is no return of investment, there is no there's return of investment. Coming. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and even if Dr. Chumbin Muri wins, mm. he will not get a ministerial bird in the center. I assuming that you know BGB comes back. I mean, even even our CM Rio himself could not get it. So definitely, exactly, there is exactly. lesser chance exactly, of his exactly. possibility. Yeah. I mean, um, to be realistic, BJP's manifesto is already released. I think today. Oh, and um, okay. And they're focusing a lot on many. Of course, they have their own development agenda. However, some of the things that I want to highlight and you know see your reaction are uniform civil code, mm. which will totally affect the religious minorities. The way we handle marriage laws, the way we exactly. handle religious yeah. laws, mm. inheritance of mm. properties. That's one. And another is one nation, one election. Mm. And another is um, the CAA. Mm. So those are the issues that they have openly declared that they're going to achieve this, they're going mm. to target this if you vote for us. Mm. I mean, do you have any yes. quick reaction to that? This has been the agenda from before. Yep. See, the BGP, they are very smart in the sense that they have a vision mm. of how this country should be. Mm. So whether it's CEO or whether it's one nation, one election or one nation, one language or culture, whatever, yeah. they have, you know, like work, worked it out long time back. Now, if you talk about Universal Civil Code, Uttarakhand has already implemented that. Yep. So it's just a matter of time mm -hmm. before all the BGP rule states implement this act. Mm -hmm. Now, we have this, uh, you, know, you know, Healing Practices Act in Assam, mm. right? Yeah. So this act was designed to uh, check Naga missionaries working in Assam and elsewhere. It's a clear-cut agenda. Himanda did not bring this act just for the sake of it, but he wanted to check Naga missionary, mission activities in Assam. Mm. So these are the things which we are totally and absolutely worried about. Mm. And you haven't asked the most important question. Mm. What about secularism? Yeah. Definitely, if, it, if they get 370 to 400 seats, mm. they will change the constitution, they will remove the word secularism. Mm. And once they remove the word secularism, India will automatically become a Hindu state, a Hindu rastra. Mm. Mm. India will be no different from the Islamic Republic of Turkey or, you know, Pakistan, Pakistan and any of these countries. Yeah. And this is the danger for minorities and Christians. So, I'm repeating myself. This is the reason why Nagas have decided to vote for Congress. Mm. And you oh. could see that from the rallies that you have attended also? I Absolutely. Mean, I, want, I want to know, like, how are the reaction of the people, I mean, in, in regards to Congress mm. in, the, in the ground? Mm. Because whatever we see on social media is mm. just the you know, creamy layer yes. of our population. Mm. How is the reaction of people in the ground who are, who are not aware of what's going on around the world, who are not aware of ideology, what is the reaction? Yesterday, we had a rally in Tsiminu, where Mr. Subang Marin Jamir, he came and addressed. Okay. In fact, there were more people in this rally in a small town called Tsiminu mm. than in Agri Expo. The state level kind of... Yes, mm. that's a contrast. Okay. You know? So, when we talk to the villagers, this time, I, I will not talk about our constituencies, mm. but my constituency Tsiminu. I'm telling you, Tsiminu will get more votes than the NDPP and other parties alliance together. Mm, mm. Yes, because the general public, even the grassroots people, mm. the, I mean the villagers and the leaders, they are, they, are, they are with Congress. They are not necessarily, you know, listening to me. Mm. I'm the, I was the RPP candidate over there. Mm. Not necessarily listening to me, but because of the things which has been, you know, going on in this country, especially related to Christian persecution, mm. they are happy and they said that they will vote for Congress. If you look at state assembly, people support like honest people or people who have no 
uh, record of corruption. For example, like you, Kahuto, there's support on social media like anything. Mm. If you look at, check the comments. Mm. If you compare the comments given on YouTube yeah. or any social mm. media between Hekani and mm. uh, Kahuto, mm. you'll see Kahuto's comment like yeah. full of support. Yeah. But at the end of the day, he was like literally massacred in the election. <laughs> However, that's assembly wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now this is a general MB yeah. election. Mm. So how would you react to that? Because the vibe is different. See, uh, as I stated before, Subong Meron doesn't have any MLAs with him, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. He is totally handicapped. Yeah. And the Congress uh, grassroots machinery, which existed 20 years back, mm. is not there anymore. True. But despite the fact that Subong Meron could visit only the district headquarters, mm -hmm. so when he comes to Tsiminu or Mokchung or Zunapoto, he can meet only 200 training people at the most. So despite his handicap, he has been able to mobilize or able to inspire the people to vote for him. See, when you contrast this with the NTPP, their, their grassroots machinery is very strong. They have strong supporters everywhere. They have 60 MLAs. All these 60 MLAs are campaigning as we speak, right? As I said, door to door, house to house. But despite this, the public sentiment is with Subong Meren. What does it show you? <laughs> Some of these people have never met Subong Meren face to face in reality. They have only seen his poster. They have only seen his uh, face in social media. But despite despite all these uh, handicaps, he is still able to inspire people. <laughs> Would I be right to say it's not more about Subong Meren? It's about their people's anti-incumbency -incum feeling against the BJP. Okay. I Would that be, I mean, from your experience with interaction with uh, the people? See, Supong Marin, yes. Many people did not know him yeah. before he entered the fray. Mm. I can, you know, I, I accede to that. But Supong Marin is somebody who is humble yeah. and he is an honest man. Mm -hmm. And for 20 plus years, when everybody had left the Congress, left, right, and center. Mm. He was the one holding the fort, the yes. Congress flag. So he's an ideological person. Mm. And people can relate to that. Now, if today, instead of Subung Meren, it was somebody who had just defected from NTBP or NPF someone or BJP. Someone very well known. Yes, for someone yeah. very well known, <laughs> okay. right? Mm -hmm. But he had defected. Yeah. Do you think the sentiment would have been the same? Absolutely not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So means that means Subong Marin has a lot of role to play. I mean, in regards to people's sentiment. Yes, absolutely, yeah? yes. Okay, okay. Now, you know that, you know, I mean, BJP has also vastly invested when it comes to development. Mm. I mean, you look at the roads, look at the infrastructure, railway station, whatnot, like they mentioned a lot about it. And they have done it. When you compare to the past Congress terms, like BJP has outdone it in that sense. However, that's development. And for me personally, development means it's something like a clickbait or bait where you click and you just get caught. What we need is assurance from a government that your rights will be protected as a minority. So now, what is your reaction to the claim that BJP has done more development than the Congress in the Northeastern region, which holds some value? The BJP is running a government. Mm. And what is the duty of any government? To bring development and services to the people. Mm -hmm. And do you think that we should be grateful for that? Because, I'm posing the question because they have, an, uh, they have a sinister design mm. behind those developmental activities. It's like the Assam Rifles, right? Okay. Assam Rifles, they slaughtered thousands of Nagas in Naga Hills over the past you know, 50, 60 years. And they call themselves the friend of the people, hills people, right? But and, and in order to win the people, they impart a new policy to win the hearts of the Naga people by carrying out developmental activities in the villages through, you know, like, a, you know, building some, you know, waiting shed and medical you know, camps, medical camps, things like that. Yeah. So he's akin to that. Mm -hmm. When Congress, dev if Congress develops the Northeast region, it is without any bias, without any any hidden agenda. I can assure you that. Or for that matter, if NDPP develops Nagaland, 
there's no hidden agenda because the ndp people they they themselves are christians mm-hmm. but if bjp does it there's always a hidden agenda because why are they making roads they are making roads because they have to counter china not of the not of nagaland and uh, even counter brahma if possible right by making uh, accessible roads if they are you know like uh, building airports and if they are bringing trains see these are all accessible things this all um, a matter of accessibility so you know there's always a hidden agenda and uh, Yes, I am grateful that the BJP has brought development to the northeast. But there is a sinister design. Look at Assam. Why is the central government pouring in tens of thousands of crores in Assam? And why not Nagaland, Mizoram and Meghalaya or even Manipur for that matter? Why only Assam and Arunachal Pradesh? So, when you talk about development, it's all relative. You know, Assam gets always gets eighty percent of the share. Ten percent of the share will go to Arunachal, and the ten percent will be shared by you know the, the other states like Tripura, Nagaland, Mizoram, Meghalaya, and Manipur. So I don't see this as development, but I see this as a you know uh, an agenda. Yes, I mean the reality is also that now the election, this election, BJP has not fielded any candidate. Rather, they wanted to align. I mean, build an alliance with the NDPP, which is a local party. What, why do you think BJP is not fielding any candidate of their own? They have full power. They have full control. Why they're not fielding? Because NDPP is their proxy party. As simple as that. Mm-hmm. Now, if the BJP fields their own candidate, I mean, its own candidate, they know for sure that you know that candidate is not going to win. Mm. But they have found a very good ally in NDPP. Mm. And Mr. Rio, the chief minister, mm. do you think he is really free? Okay. If you remember in 2021, there was an ED investigation against five of Mr. Rio's uh, right-hand men. Mm. They were interrogated left, right, and center in Delhi. Okay. And we published this in the newspaper. Wow. Now, I'm, it's just a matter of conjecture. I really don't know. But those are facts. Mm-hmm. And probably the ED has something on Mr. Rio, or even the CBI for the matter, or even the NIA for the matter. Mm-hmm. And therefore, he is, not, he is not free. He is saying that the NDPP is a defender of Naga faith and identity. But so far in the last 20 years, we haven't seen anything mm-hmm. where Mr. Rio has defended Naga identity and faith. Mm-hmm. In fact, let me use a very harsh word. Mr. Rio is a puppet. And in turn, these 60 MLAs are puppets of Rio because he controls all the resources in the state. Mm. Why do you think that these uh, 20 ENLU uh, MLAs are, you know, going against EMPO? Mm. It's true, Mr. Rio's direction. Because of Mr. Rio, Inlo is taking a risk to the extent that even if, you know, uh, they no longer represent the sentiments of the Eastern Naga people. So be it, as long as Mr. Rio is satisfied. Mm-hmm. You know, that kind of attitude. So, Rio has been controlled by Delhi, and Rio is controlling the 60 MLAs. Are people aware of that? I'm sure everybody is aware of that. And I'm sure many people are aware of the ED case as well. Mm. Because it was a front page news. By the way, many Naga people don't read newspapers. Yeah. I understand yeah. that. I mean, I myself yeah. am not aware of that. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just hearing okay. from you for the first yeah. time. I mean, there are a lot of allegations in your day-to-day conversation, people saying this and that, but this kind of um, allegations that ED had interrogated him and, I mean, he, some yes. of his right hands. Yes. That's interesting. I mean, I would love to know better about it. Mm-hmm. Um, now, even when you look at India, I mean, I had a conversation with uh, Jeremy Ramesh. Yes, Ramesh. I watched it. Yeah, yeah. recently. Wonderful interview. That was, I mean, I, I, I was glad that yeah. he was there and he was ready to yeah. talk. You pulled off a coup. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he was mentioning this is not a fight between Congress 
or in the alliance between PJB and Congress. It's a fight between democracy and PJB. Mm. Because if PJB scores or secures 400 plus seats, mm. they're going to rewrite the constitution. Yes. And they're going, the soul of India, which is the democratic soul mm. of India, will not be there anymore. Mm. Do you truly believe in such thing? I mean, locally. I totally subscribe to it. Mm -hmm. Because this is no longer an electoral battle. Mm -hmm. In the Nagaland context, in our Nagaland context, it's a battle between the RSS and Nagas. It's a battle between RSS and Nagas, mm. Nagaland context. Mm. In the Indian context, what Jeremy Ramesh stated is totally true. Because we are talking about a survival of democracy, which will, now, which, which will not be there if the BGP comes to power with absolute majority, with two-thirds majority. With two-thirds majority, they can change the constitution of India, remove secularism, and any word in the constitution which doesn't gel with their Hindutva ideology. See, we have to understand that the, it's, uh, this Hindutva ideology is a, it's a dream. You know, it's, it's the vision of the founders of the BJP and the Sangh. Mm. Now, if you remember in 2019, Amit Shah said that we will rule India for the next 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. And during that time, I thought this is, Amit Shah is a fool. But then the BJP came to power with 303 seats, right? Yeah. From 273 to 303, something like that. Yeah. Now, when we, you know, recollect uh, Amit Shah's word, I mean, it's totally true. And the BJP, the BJP and RSS, they have openly stated that they will change the constitution of India. See, what they're trying to do is to bring back the past glory of India mm. before the advent of Muslim rule in India. Mm. The advent of Muslim rule happened in 1192 when uh, Muhammad of Ghori, okay. he established the Delhi Sultanate. And prior to that, you know, Chandra Gupta Murya, Samudra Gupta. Mm -hmm. These were the, you know, the Hindu kings, you know, who were all powerful. And, you know, this was known as the age of Hindu kings. They exported the Hindu culture to Indonesia, Bali, Sri Lanka, Cambodia. So they want to reenact the past glory of Hindu kings. Mm -hmm. This is the agenda, as simple as that. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, they just, they just cannot brainwash the army to, you know, uh, uh, to overtake the civil administration or to overtake the constitution of India. And what they are doing is through various methods like mm -hmm. tweaking the constitution, you know, imposing the culture, mm -hmm. things like that. So in order to avert this kind of diversive forces or anti-constitutional forces, I mean, to which BJP is very uncomfortable with this kind of constitution and diversity, they want just like cultural nationalism based on Hindu culture. That you have also spelled out very nicely. Now, it sounds like I, 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 I'm just I'm reading that you are also as a minority and as someone who believes in democracy and constitution, you have been personally also affected and deeply hurt by this movement, by these forces. Now, as a leader of the party RPP, what are your contributions? I mean, how are you going to contribute to this? And you have done a lot, but more than this, how are you contribute? to make sure your favorite party, Congress, is elected, I mean, in the days to come? Um, see, the, w the I mean, we'll have to cast our votes, obviously, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, our party could not uh, contest in, you know, the rest of the constituencies, except mm -hmm. for Tsiminu. Yeah. So, as far as Tsiminu is concerned, at least I will be able to sway my supporters okay. to vote for Congress mm. and the rest of the constituents, to the rest of the voters in various constituencies, we can only appeal because we are not part of the campaigning mm. team of the Congress. And uh, we can only appeal to the, uh, what are the goodwill of the Naga people. But uh, having said that, I just want to you know, make an appeal to the Naga people mm. Subang Mering, as a candidate, he is handicapped by resources and he doesn't have the manpower in terms of MLS. And therefore, he is unable, unable to cover many constituencies 
in the sense, you know, the smaller, smaller towns and the subdivisions and things like that. But the people should not worry. Mm. Just because Subang Marin did not visit their place or area doesn't mean that Subang Marin doesn't care about them. So I just want to appeal to Naga people, given the handicap he has, they should also understand and ensure that, you know, they, they vote for Congress and they should ensure that they go to the polling booth by any means. Because if the voting percentage is low, Subang Marin will not win. Mm. When we talk about the Naga population, the age 18 to 35 years, it, they have the highest number. It, this this age group, not this cohort, mm. has the highest number of uh, population. They are almost 33%, 33, 35 okay. percent. Okay. And these are the people who doesn't have any ideological inclinations as such, yep. right? They are free rangers. Yeah. But people above 40, they are ideologically inclined towards Congress, BJP, NDPP, whatever, nah? or okay, RPP. Okay. So this age group is very, very important. They should, they should come up or come out, they should go to the polling booths and they should vote. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so that's your appeal. Yes. And the last question or reaction that I want to get from you is NPCC, the Nagaland Baptist Churches Council, mm. also issued an appeal that vote for democracy. That doesn't necessarily mean Congress. Mm -hmm. If BGP wants to promote definitely democratic values, you know, please vote for them. I mean, that's the kind of mm -hmm. message that they're giving. Yeah. But however, however, even the BJD or RJD, one group had- JD, JDU. JDU, right? Yeah. You know, like backlashed that the NBC is saying, you don't need to involve in mm -hmm. politics. Keep your religion as your mission. Teach us how to be a better Christian. You don't have to put your hand in that. But as a politician, what is your take on that? See, uh, what the NPCC did was right. Mm. Because the narrative being thrown around is that uh, be, uh, see, uh, Mr. Rio and Mr. Chumbin Muri, what they are saying is that the Congress should not play with religion, right? Mm -hmm. This is a narrative which they are throwing around, throwing about. Mm -hmm. Congress should not talk about religion. Congress should not play with religion. Now, I want to ask them a very simple question. The BJP in India and in all the states, they are playing with religion. They are playing with Hindutva. Absolutely. They are playing, they are trashing Christians. They are burning building, uh, churches. Look at what happened in Manipur. And it's not only Manipur, it's all over India. Whereas the BJP can, you know, play with religion, the Congress cannot play with religion, it's, you know, it's a false, you know, comparison. Mm -hmm. So what the J JDU, how the JDU reacted is, you know, very, uh, you know, I would put it in a very high, how do I put it? JDU reaction was very childish. Mm -hmm. Let me put it this way, okay? okay? Because the church is a defender of the faith. Whether it's in politics, whether it's in workplace, whether it's inside the church, whether it is, you know, in our uh, everyday life, mm -hmm. the role of the church is to defend our faith. And if the church cannot defend our faith, what is the meaning of having, why, why, should, why should there be a church or, or what should be the role of the church? Mm -hmm. See, the church cannot talk only about heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. uh, the church has an authority over every aspect of our life. And politics is one of those aspects. And the church has every right to talk about the dangers facing uh, the Nagas as well as the dangers upon the Christians in India. Interesting. So, I mean, your party also has, if Congress wins, mm. you have also, I mean, it's, do you think it's a chance for you to also, how to say, popularize your party as an, you know, one party that really supports Congress to come to power? Do you have such dividends if Congress wins? See, we have no dividends, Okay. right? Our only worry is that, you know, for the Naga people, mm. Christian, sh Christian persecution should stop in India. Christians should not be, no, should not be treated as third-class citizens. Mm. Nagas should not be uh, treated as second class or third class citizens. Naga identity and culture should not be trampled and done away with. Those are the only worries we have at the moment. Mm -hmm. By supporting Congress, 
we are doing it at an ideological level, as I explained before. Mm. So if Subong Marin wins, we're happy. The Nagas are happy. There, we don't get any dividends as such. But at least, you know, democracy will not be in peril if India Alliance comes to power. Mm -hmm. So that's our prayer, in short. Mm -hmm. So with that, I want to thank you for coming and sharing your thoughts. And wish you, wishing you all the best. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah.